Hey guys, it's Craig here. Boy, those lights are bright. <laughs> it's just been a while. Hey, uh, welcome back. Uh, I'm, I've got a kettle of water going here on the uh, induction burner. I hope you can't hear the... Sometimes this causes interference with the audio, but we'll, we'll see. I've got myself a nice home brew. I believe this is a Cooper's IPA with Cooper's yeast. Cooper's have changed their yeast, I swear. Um, it's different, it smells different, it's finer, it's a finer grind, and it tastes a hell of a lot better. So if anyone from, uh, from Cooper's is listening, good, thank you. The other yeast was appley and weird, didn't like it, never used it. I got a whole pile of, of Cooper's yeast here that I never used. I mean, I've got I've just a few of them here, there's a whole pile over there, because I didn't think it was any good, but these are different than the old yeasts. Now, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. It's, I've been using these Cooper's kits for 30 years, or 20 anyway, and um, I know what the yeast used to be like. Anyway, cheers. Good old home brew. Gotta love it. Nothing wrong with that at all. All right, today we're going to brew a beer. I know, that's a surprise, isn't it? Um, so I just went ahead and, and um, got this on the thing here. This is about a gallon of water. Maybe, maybe not even a gallon. Just, you know, enough to, to dissolve the sugar that we're going to put in. So what we're going to be brewing today is this. Now I got a bunch of beer kits from RK Dangerously, or Ryan. And this is one of them. Now, I have to apologize to Ryan because right after he sent the, uh, the beer kits in, my YouTube channel got deleted. And you, you, if you've been listening, you know that whole fiasco and you know what, what happened. So um, I stopped making videos and I just said, to hell with it, um, I'm done with YouTube. If that's what they're gonna do to me, then I'm not gonna shoot. And I got the channel back, but I still lost my, as I explained in the prior videos, I've, I lost my, I don't know, something something went away when that happened so i didn't make a lot of videos on those particular beer kits but i will say that they were all delicious all of them and it was a very very kind gift from rk to send me those beer kits i didn't have to buy any beer kits for two months <laughs> whatever whatever it was so it saved me a lot of money and i really really enjoyed the beer so today we're going to brew this one this is one of the ones he sent and this is there's no name there's no actual um brand on this. This is Make Your Own Handcrafted Beer Kit. Irish Red Ale. That's what it is. So inside of here is the liquid malt extract and then there's the yeast and the instructions which I don't need because I've already read I, I've done one of these before. I know what the you know. This is so easy I can't even believe you're going to watch this. This is like ridiculous. And um there's some also some uh, hops in here too, which is really neat that they send you hops uh, that you dry hop with, and it really makes a difference. I wish the Coopers and the other canned kits would do that. You know, some, some, find a way to tape some hops onto the side or do whatever, just to, so you can dry hop. But you can always buy your own hops and do it, do it anyway. So let's get this open. Um, I've got the uh, water. This is, I mean, there's guys out there with massive brew setups doing day-long uh, brews, beer brews, you know. And um, I just feel so stupid. You know? This is the way I brew beer because I'm not really a hobbyist when it comes to brew beer, beer brewing, brew beering. Um, I do it because the price of beer here is high. So I make my own, and it's, I, I, I like this beer as much as, if not more than, the beer that I would normally be buying. And I mean that. This isn't just, you know, me kissing someone's ass. I'm not kissing anyone's ass. I like this beer. It tastes better than the store-bought stuff, and it's a hell of a lot cheaper. So let's see what's in here. Well, we already know what's in here, but uh, the water doesn't have to come to a boil, okay? As a matter of fact, before we get to this thing, let's put in our, this is a kilogram of dextrose, that's corn sugar. That's what it calls for, it's a kit and kilo. 
all right? I'm not going to do close-ups or anything like that because I just want to get this done. You guys, the videos won't get done if I have to go through all that trouble um, because I'm a procrastinator. So I just added one kilogram of dextrose to this about three quarters of a gallon of water. It doesn't matter how much, you know, as long as there's enough water to dissolve it, that's all that matters. Just give it a, a bit of a stir. And then really all you're really doing with this is pasteurizing the uh, the, the sugar. Um, really this is, this is a no boil method and I've never had a problem with it. If you wanna boil your water first because you've got bad water and you wanna boil it with this in it so that this is sterilized or whatever, that's up to you. I don't do it and I don't think it needs to be done because I've, I've never had a problem with it. As long as it's over 150 degrees Fahrenheit, the sugar's in, um, it, it's, it's hot, uh, it's very, it's probably more than 150 right now, so it's, it's basically pasteurized, I'm fine. If you're doing um, all grain or other things, maybe, you know, you have to boil it because you've got to do the hops and all that kind of thing. So, and plus you're using grains that aren't s sterilized, you know, it came out of a bag or something, and you kind of have to, you know, you got to boil stuff. But with this, everything is pretty much sanitary anyway don't have I don't have any problems with this so maybe people are too cautious but with with when you're doing the boils you know with the um, all grain stuff like that or partial extract yeah you gotta boil stuff because you're putting stuff in there that's been sitting in a bag who knows what th what's in there what bacteria or whatever bugs who knows okay let's get into this now let's be careful we don't cut the wrong area here what's gonna happen is that we're gonna end up with sticky fingers in one part there's the instructions and stuff and all the stuff that comes with it right and this is where you want to be careful you don't this doesn't tip over so what we've got here is uh, hops those are for dry hopping, that happens later. That doesn't happen during this video. I'll do a separate video for that when I do a tasting. The yeast that comes with it, I have no idea what, what yeast it is. There's no, it's generic. There's no label on it, there's nothing. But it's actually pretty good yeast. I actually preferred it over the Cooper's yeast for a while before they changed their yeast, the Cooper's did. And this is, I don't know, maybe it's just US05 or something, I don't know. But it's, it's good yeast as far as I know. Don't know what kind it is, don't know what strain, nothing. You don't, when you're doing these simple kits, really you don't need to know that kind of stuff. And the instructions, which are basically sanitize your stuff, um, which I'm doing. Um, you know, heat up some water, add the stuff to it, the liquid malt extract, stir it. They don't say to rinse out this bag, because when you pour out that liquid, liquid malt extract, it's really sticky. And a lot of it's left inside there, so I'm going to do an extra step, and I think they should add that step to this thing, is to take some hot water, just hot water out of there or out of the tap or whatever, and rinse out that so you get all of the liquid malt extract that's stuck inside there, all right? So they, we don't need that. This thing's there. We just need this here. I got chicken wings waiting for me upstairs when I finish this, so I'm, it's a good day. It's a good day. Now, so we got that. Um, so in the other little compartment is the, let's see if we can, it's sticky. There, inside of there, and I can't show you because I'll spill it all over the place is the liquid malt extract. And there's, uh, I guess it's pre-hopped, like there's hops already, you know, the bittering hops are in there. And then what you're gonna be doing later on, about five days after you pitch the yeast, is you're gonna be adding these babies here. And that really makes a difference. Even if you're brewing a, a canned uh, extract kit, you should get some hops from somewhere, Cascade or some finishing hops, some low IBU hops, and just 
after four or five days, just open up the lid, throw them in there. Don't stir it or nothing. It makes a big difference. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Sticky hands, gotta love it. Um, so, up there. Now, what we're gonna, we've already added our sugar, and I think this is hot enough. You can kind of hear it's getting close to the boil. It doesn't need to boil. Um, this is so stupid. It's so easy, I just don't know why I'm doing it. I'm doing this because people have asked me to do it. They say, I don't care what you do, Craig, just do it. Just be on, just go on and do anything. So I'm doing anything. I'm making this beer because it was sent to me and I like these kits. I think they're fantastic. I think they taste great and we'll sample it when it's done. Okay, we're gonna swing the camera over to that side of the uh, area and um, continue, okay? Hi. I hope I'm on. I hope I'm framed up properly. This is a bit of a bit of a rush job here. There we go. No, we should be okay. All right. So basically, now what we're doing is we've got a fermenter that's full of star sand, and I've already got a, um, a stir paddle in there. This is so simple. It's so simple. You know, I've already done this, but we'll do it again just to show you how. We're doing it. Got the airlock already on there, so some of that gets up into the airlock, so it sanitizes that. Once you're done that, you take off your lid, and you just... We're just gonna get our sanitizer. I use distilled water with my sanitizers, with my star sand. I have a, a water distiller. I bought it for that purpose, actually, believe it or not. Um, I know, they're expensive, and it was silly, and I thought there would be other applications for distilled water. Actually, there is for cleaning vinyl, vinyl records. I just have always wanted a water distiller and I have one. So I can make this star sand and it won't go cloudy with distilled water. I've got this tiny little funnel here. Um, yeah. And we're just going to pour the star sand out of this and back into the container. Let's hold on to that spoon there. Whoa! Sorry about that. There. Lost a little bit of it there, but it's getting old anyway. Sometimes you're making these videos, you try to rush things. Put the foam back in if you have to. Don't fear the foam. The foam's good for the yeast, and it doesn't hurt anything. It's good for it. So now what I do usually is um this is you know i take my water hang on a second turn that off grab my water sugar mixture that has been pasteurized for for lack of a better Firm, I guess, and then we just pour that in there. There we go. Alrighty, there you have it. So there's our water and our sugar. Then we grab our. This <laughs> is so, so easy, it's not even. It is funny. It is funny. That's how easy it is. Our liquid malt extract, pre hopped, and we. And we, we insert it into the hot water as much as, as we can, but we're going to rinse this out. They don't say to rinse it out. I don't know how the heck else you would do this. Don't put this bag of, um, of liquid malt extract in hot water to heat it up. Sometimes they'll, they'll tell you to you know put this in hot water, get it nice and hot or warm so that it, um, so that it's easier to pour. Well, if you do that, well, your yeast is still in there. You might mess up the yeast. You might kill the yeast or something if you're getting it hot. I don't think that's a good idea. So I had to open this to get the yeast out of it. Um, and I could have dipped it in some hot water, but I didn't. All right, so there. Now, this is messy. Let's see if we can... All right. Okay, let's give that a stir. 
And what we're basically doing is we're, we're just dissolving the liquid malt extract with the hot water. In my sleep, I can do this. This is so easy. Wine, making wine is even easier. Making wine is ridiculous. I, I made wine, you can, it's ridiculous how easy making wine is and it's good wine too. Okay. I was in a chat room not that long ago in a, in a broadcast, in a chat room. And I went, I came over here and I made a batch of wine and nobody even knew I was gone. how easy that is and I love wine wine's great wine is wonderful okay I think it is anyways maybe you don't like it let me end up a bit of a mess here mm. someone told me once that uh, you could use this as barbecue sauce maybe you could I've never done that when I can make beer out of something, I tend not to think about barbecue sauce. Okay, so there's the inside of the the gooey mess, and I'm not used to it because I don't. I usually use the cans when I brew, but I'll try to get some hot water into here without making a hell of a mess. Okay, put a little bit more maybe. I, I don't brew these very often at all, so I'm not used to what, how to, I don't have a method. Okay, so what I usually do with the can is I, let's put a little bit more. I just, I'm afraid it's gonna collapse on me. You know, like they fall over and collapse and make a big mess and waste it all. Things were, I think we're all right. It's almost at the top there, so we'll stop that there, and we won't we won't uh, let go of it. Um, what I usually do here is I leave this for a few minutes, and I can't. Can I? Is that going to stay? Can I, is that going to stay there? Are we going to have a massive blooper here? No, we're not going to have a massive blooper. That should be fine for just a moment. While I go over here and get my my beer. Don't wait for it. It's not going to happen. Okay, there we are. <laughs> Oh, I'll put that back there so we don't spill it. And then just um, grab your, look at that, grab your nice little stir spoon here and just give it a stir. Get all that, we're going to get all that stuff out of there as much as we can. Out of the bottom and the sides. Takes a few minutes. Maybe I'll speed this part up. It just seems so stupid to waste this. It's all stuck in the, on the inside there. Da 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 stir stir stir. Da 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 stir. Oh, that's turn turn turn. Oh, never mind then. Okay, sorry. Sorry. All right. I think we have it. Look at look at all that that came out of there. That look, that, that, I'm happy to see that. That's we've got most of it out. That's good. So we'll get rid of that, and we will stir it again. Now, this is hot. I'm going to be adding about ten liters of water into this. It's not going to be cold enough or cool enough to pitch the yeast. This is what happens to me in the summertime. My tap water is not cold enough to bring this down to a pitchable temperature. So what do I do? What happens is if it's too warm, I put the I just put the lid on and I leave it for eight, seven, six hours. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna get infected, especially if you boiled it. It's not everything's fine. I know people tell you. Oh, you know, get that yeast in as quickly as possible. I've actually had accidents where I've left um, a wort for, like, by accident because it was a little too warm. So I thought I'll just leave it for a couple hours and then forgot about it. 
don't I don't recommend you do this on purpose, but I forgot about it and 24 hours went by and I look came over and nothing was happening and I went, "Oh, shoot. Forgot to pitch the yeast." So, and I pitched the yeast and it was fine. I don't recommend you do it on purpose, but I have to do it with this because I know damn well that this is not going to, I mean, that's hot. This is not going to be cool enough to pitch. So I'm going to move it over to its final resting place. Okay. I have to be able to see that. And we're going to fill it up with cold water. Now in the winter time, this works perfectly because the water is really cold, but in the summer, especially this summer, it's been very hot here. Um, in Canada, for those of you who don't know, we do have hot summers. Um, in areas of Canada, that is. Most of it, most of the areas anyway. I'll just fill this up to 19 liters. That's where I fill mine up to. It makes just a better beer than doing it to 23 liters. So that's it. That's it. Hair more, just like that. Okay. Right, and then give it a. Oh yeah, I mean, I can. It's way too warm. No way you could pitch it. I can get out my um, wart chiller and sanitize it and run water through it and get this cooled off. It doesn't, it's not necessary for this. I, I've never had a problem with just leaving it for four hour, five hour, whatever long, however long it takes. Just leave it there. Um, with the lid on and the airlock, you know, it's not going to, any yeast that's in there, that's, um, if it does start to, you know, multiply or whatever, as soon as you put the actual yeast in, that yeast is gone. It's, it'll kill it off. Ninety-eight degrees. <laughs> like I'm going to pitch my yeast. No way. Yeah. So, um, I will pitch that. I'll do that off camera. I'm not going to turn everything on again just to show you how I sprinkle the yeast on top. And no, I don't stir uh, my wort after. And I le I'll leave the spoon in here because I'll stir it just before I pitch the yeast. I'll just get that on there. And I will put water in the airlock. And I'll keep checking it. And I might even have to like go to bed. It might be too late to stay up and, and it's not ready yet. And I get up in the morning, I'll check it and it'll be fine. I'll pitch the yeast. There's no problem with that. Um, so after about five days of um, fermentation, I will lift the lid and I will sprink sprinkle in those hops. I'll just sprinkle them on and put the lid back on and they will take care of themselves. These beer kits are really, really nice. They're a little more expensive than the Coopers and the other ones, the other canned ones. Um, and if you're doing all grain, it might be cheaper just for you to do that instead, uh, all grain, but all grain takes hours, hours. And I don't have, my feet aren't very good these days. I get tired of standing and stuff um, and I, don't mind the beer that comes out of these things at all, at all. So, okay. So I will come back with, you know, with an update of how this is doing. Um, when I pitch the yeast or, and when I taste it and we'll see how it turns out. It's almost ready to go. I'll pitch the yeast and I'll come back when we've got something. Okay. All right. Everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned. Got more stuff coming up, just stuff, whatever, around here. And um, I will see you then. Take care. Don't forget my Friday night broadcasts. Um, it's vaughn.live slash craigtube. Friday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern. And 
my radio show, which I spend a lot of time on these days, some it's one of the things I kind of switched over to from YouTube. Um, once they booted me and brought me back, I said, well, I, I need something else to do. So I started a radio show. I started doing that on Retro 80s Radio. And um, I love it. I love doing it. We, it's 80s music. Um, I do countdowns and stuff like that. And we play the best hits. And I'm your host uh, for two hours on Sunday afternoons, 5 p.m. Eastern. Sunday afternoons, 5 p.m. Eastern. Retro80sRadio.com. It's all you need to know. It's on my tuner. It's on TuneIn Radio. It's on Roku. It's on Apple TV. It's on Deezer. It's on all kinds of platforms. But if, you know you can access it any of those ways that you want. But really, all you need really need to do is go to RetroEighties.Radio.com at 5 p.m. on Sundays afternoons. I'm, I'm there. I'll be your host with the most. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Where's my darn beer? Only got through that much of it during this video. What the hell's going on there? <laughs> I gotta go out and check my mail so I don't wanna be staggering down the street. So take it easy on this. Thanks everybody for being here. Take care. See you soon. Bye.